I've just finished up my super bright and super happy Lucky Log Cabins quilt. Now it's time for me to make the backing. I went ahead and purchased this five yard cut and this fabric itself is actually pretty fun and bright as well. I think it's gonna go really well with the bright citron yellows in the quilt top. I'm going to be taking the time to match the pattern on this fabric. And although it might seem like that's kind of a daunting task, I promise you it's actually very simple. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the one simple trick that's going to allow me to pattern match this so that the printed designs look like they flow seamlessly from one piece of the fabric to the next, and it'll just look like one continuous piece of fabric. Are you ready to feel like a pattern matching champion? Let's get to it. When you're pattern matching, you need a little bit more fabric than if you were just making a regular quilt backing. Couple things to note, when you're making a pattern match quilt backing, the pattern is always going to be running vertically like this. So that means that your seam is going to be running vertically from the top to the bottom of your quilt. And that should be totally fine, but you're just gonna have two long pieces that go like this. So in order to find out how much fabric I need, I need to know how big this quilt is. I've measured it and it's 76 inches from top to bottom. So I'm gonna put that in my calculator, okay? 76 inches. I'm sending mine to a long armor, me, but that means that I need an extra four inches at the top and an extra four inches at the bottom. So 76 plus four plus four equals 84. So that tells me I need two pieces of fabric that are at least 84 inches long. But one of those two pieces of fabric actually has to be a little bit longer than that. And that's because I'm going to need to shift the, fa the fabric up and down in order to match those two patterns. Just to be safe, I'm gonna say I need an extra nine inches. So I need two pieces that are 84 inches. 84 times two equals 168. Then I'm gonna need an extra about nine inches, we'll say. That's 177 inches, which is great to know. I know that I need at least 177 inches, but I can't order from quilt shops and say that I need 177 inches. Instead, I gotta tell them how many yards I need. I don't know how many yards 177 inches is, so I'm going to divide that by 36, and it tells me that it's 4.91 yards of fabric. I'm just gonna round that up to five yards of fabric. And luckily that's exactly what I have here. I have a piece of fabric that is five yards. If you were doing this on a domestic sewing machine, you wouldn't need as much fabric because you don't quite need the four inches at the top and at the bottom, but you probably want at least two inches at the top and bottom. So just keep that in mind when you're doing the math. Now that I know that I need a piece that is at least 84 inches, I'm just gonna measure out a piece of this fabric that is, 84 inches. So I've got out my biggest cutting mat and it is 36 inches wide. So I'm going to cut out, I'm just gonna put my thumb at the 36 inch mark. We're just kind of eyeballing this. It's not gonna be perfectly precise, but it's gonna work well enough for my purposes. So that is 36 inches. And now if I hold my thumb over at this mark, do it again. This is 72 inches that I've got now. I'm gonna move my thumb over. I feel like people who work in a fabric shop would be much faster and better at this job, don't we think? Okay, so that's 72 inches on the zero mark. I'm going to take out my long uh, ruler and a rotary cutter. So 72 plus 10 is 82, plus two is 84. Okay, so I'm cutting off a piece that is 84 inches wide. And then I will have a leftover piece that should be approximately 96 inches. So that's gonna work really well for me. So now I've got one piece that's 84. And if I hold that up to my quilt top, not like you'll be able to see, but I promise if I hold it up, it'll be four inches taller on the top and four inches taller on the bottom as well. And then I'll be left over with this other piece, which is 96 inches, which is long enough. It's, it's longer than what I need. So that's gonna work out perfectly. Now I've cut out my one piece that's 84 inches and on the floor over here, I've got my other piece, which is about 96 inches. And in order to prepare for this next step, the first thing I'm going to do is cut off one printed selvage. So this wider one with all the words and colors on it, I'm gonna cut that off entirely. And then on the other piece, I'm going to cut off the selvage edge, which is just the pattern. So let me start with this one. I'm going to open it up. And I'm simply going to lay my 
ruler right on top and just cut right along this printed edge. So I'm just cutting off this printed part because I don't need it. And I don't want this printed part to show up in the back of my quilt. So if I was, there's my coffee mug under there. So if I was to just leave this printed part in, then there's a big chance that while I was, I missed that one a little bit. While I was making this quilt backing and sewing it together, if you looked at the back of the quilt, you'd probably be able to see this printed part through the fabric. So if I left it, you would be able to see that printed part and I don't like that. So I'm just gonna go along and take my time and just cut off this printed part of the selvage. I'm not cutting this perfectly. It's just, I just need to get it off and that's good enough. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. I'm just cutting this off and I'm going to throw that aside. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna put my 84 inch piece of fabric off to the side as well. Now I'm gonna pick up from my storage area, the 96 inch piece of fabric. And on this one, I'm gonna cut off the opposite selvage. Instead of cutting off this piece, this colored one, I'm going to open it up lay it out and make sure that I'm cutting off that woven part at the very edge of the fabric. I need to get rid of the fuzzy part and then I also need to get rid of any parts that have kind of got those puncture holes in them. And I'm just keeping my ruler about a half inch away from the edge of the fabric. And again, it doesn't have to be super perfect. I just need to get rid of this bit so that it doesn't end up in the back of my quilt. And this is gonna end up with a cleaner, more professional looking result on the back of my quilt. So it is worth it to take the time and just chop off, take your time, just chop off these edges and future you will be happy that you did this. Oh gosh, it just keeps going. This 96 inch one just keeps going. After this, I'm gonna do some pressing. But for now, there we go. I was like, when are we gonna get to the end of this thing? We did it. Just gonna chop that off. Okay, say goodbye to that selvage. So now if I was to place these two together, you'll see that in order for the patterns to match, I need to have two pieces that are cut in the middle. So on this end over here, I've got the printed selvage and over here on this end, I've got the non-printed selvage. So that is how they should go together. You should be looking at your patterns in order to make sure that everything is aligning the correct way. And then just making sure that you've got, if you put them together, there should be two cut edges. The next thing to do from here is to take, I'm gonna take the shorter piece and I'm going to press over this side. So let me get set up with my pressing station and I'll show you what that looks like. Now that my two pieces are cut, I'm gonna prepare them for joining together by taking the shorter of the two, laying it so that it's right side facing down, and I'm going to use this cut line that I just, just cut. So this is the selvage edge that I just cut off and I'm going to fold it towards me by about an inch and just press it down using a hot iron and an ironing board or a wool pressing mat or whatever you've got. And again, this does not need to be perfectly straight and perfectly aligned. I'm just going to work my way along this edge and just press it down, folding it over by about an inch. I promise that mine are not perfectly straight and it's not a perfect seam allowance where it's exactly one inch, it's just about. And I am using seam when I steam when I do this just because I'm a steam fiend and this iron does a really great job and makes sure that it's a really nice crisp press if I use steam. So I am using steam, but if you'd prefer not to, I think that would work just, just fine as well. There we go. 
just working my way along. Nice and easy. And then I'm coming to the end of it here. Just gonna press down this last little bit. All right, that is my prep work. So now that I have trimmed off these selvages and I have pressed one edge down where I just cut off the selvage, I've pressed it down so it is a nice crisp line. Now I'm ready to join the two of them together, which we're going to do in the next step. The key to success with this next step is to have a washable glue stick. Bonus points if it's specifically made for fabric, but it doesn't have to be. So I'm using an OD505 temporary adhesive glue stick, which is washable and it says right on here, it's transparent, washable, and it doesn't gum your needles. But if you have even an Elmer's school glue, glue stick that is washable, then you're all set. That's all you need. So I've laid out my fabric in a very specific way. On the right, I've got the longer piece. Your longer piece might be on the left, that's totally fine. And I've got them so this is the way that they're going to join together. So there'll be a selvage way over on this side and a selvage way over on this side. Now I'm going to, so I've laid out my long one over here. And then on the left, I've got my piece that I cut off the selvage and then pressed over. And now all I have to do is literally just take this folded piece and line it up so that it matches the pattern on the right. And luckily for me, it looks like I don't have to, I'm not gonna lose very much fabric. If I just line this up, I can see that I'm gonna have good success if I, if I just manipulate the fabric so that it goes over and lines up. I hope you can see this on the overhead camera, but I'm just lining up the pattern, the patterns so that they match. So I'm taking my glue stick, I'm going to fold back the piece that I pressed, and this is good for camera so you can see it. The glue goes on blue, but then it dries clear. So I'm going to fold that back over and just manipulate the fabric so that it's in the correct place, all from top to bottom. And you might need to do a bit of manipulation just to make sure that your patterns are matching the way that you want them to be. And then when I've got them in the right spot, I'm just gonna hit them with my iron and that is gonna set that glue. So now this is very well um, attached. So these two pieces are well and truly attached. And I'm just going to work my way down this entire seam, doing the same thing, making sure that I am um, attaching. So I'm gluing as I go. I'm not using too much glue because I don't need too much glue. I'm just gonna lay that back over, match up the patterns. And it's kind of fun. It's like a little matching game. These little blouses look adorable when you match them up. When I'm happy with it in its correct position, I'm just gonna use a bit of heat on them. Now I'm going to pull this all down towards me and keep going until I've got the whole thing done. So um, this might get easier as I go, or it might get easier for you as you go. Maybe you have a really big pattern that you're trying to match. Mine is fairly small, I'm finding. And I might need to just sort of gently ease in the fabric where needed. I'm putting the glue on the fold rather than on the piece of fabric. Whoops, I just got some all over the back of my fabric there. That's okay, it's gonna wash out. So this will wash out when you wash the quilt, not before then. So it'll hold, it's a temporary hold, but I mean, it's a pretty good temporary hold until you are about to wash it. Go. Go. Now, when we come to the next stage, we're going to be sewing this because, you know, eventually you do actually have to sew this thing together. And we're going to be using our fold line as our sew line. So just keep that in mind. Your fold line is going to be your sew line. Fold this back some more, add some more glue. Eventually I'll get the hang of exactly how much I should be gluing, like how far up I should be gluing. 
working my way along so that the patterns match perfectly. Just doing the best job that I can. This is a cute pattern, I will say that. Cute. That was warm. And I don't think you need to watch me do the whole thing. So I'm going to do a little time lapse of the next section here as I finish my way up. And I get all the way to the top of my 84 inches that I've cut. I'm coming to the end of the bit that I need to glue and whoopsies, look, it looks as if I actually folded over the edge on the longer piece. I meant to do that on the shorter piece simply because on the shorter piece, you absolutely need to glue the entire thing, but on the longer piece, you do not need to glue the entire thing. And you'll notice uh, because, you know, some of your fabric is longer than the short piece and so it doesn't need to have glue on it. And you'll notice that I am gluing not right close to the fold, but further away at the edge that I cut instead. And that's because it, later on in this process, we're going to be trimming this. So given that I'm, I'm going to be trimming the seam allowance, I don't, uh, I want to be able to press it open later on. And it, that is going to be aided by the fact that I have glued further away from the fold. So I made a one inch seam allowance by folding it over about one inch and then I glued towards the very edge. So theoretically, when I go to trim this seam allowance, I'm just gonna be trimming off the parts with the glue because we're not gonna need them after that. Okay, so now I've got my piece of fabric, my two pieces of fabric, they're stuck together. And now I'm going to flip the piece that was folded on top of the piece that was not folded and that's going to reveal to me dun, 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 the fold. So these, these are attached, they're glued together. And you can see that there's a fold and that's gonna be my sewing line. So I'm going to uh, bring these to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew along this folded line. I'm just gonna try and put my needle right in that little um, dip, in that little valley. And I'm just gonna sew, sew, sew from the top to the bottom. Uh, good news, you don't need pins for this because they're all glued together and the two pieces are, you know, they're fairly well held together So you don't need to worry too much about um, them coming apart Although I might be careful like I wouldn't leave this for three days and then pick it up later I might just try and do it on the same day. So I've got them right sides together I'm taking this I'm gonna sew, set up my sewing machine and just sew 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 down this line And I'll do a little bit back stitching at the front and the very end of that stitch all right, my fabrics are right sides together and now I'm just gonna be sewing down this fold line, starting and doing a bit of back stitching just at the very beginning and at the end. And I don't have to sew perfectly perfect on this line. I'm just gonna do my very best. And I'm gonna go nice and slow and steady and sew all the way down until I finished all 84 inches of this quilt pack. coming up to the end so I can see here that this is the end so when I get here I'm just going to do a little bit of back stitching right about there there we go now my entire piece has been stitched together all right that's excellent progress so now the whole thing is actually sewn together into one big piece that is fairly well pattern matched. 
but I'm not done yet. I'm actually going to trim off this excess. So this is about an inch seam allowance that I have here and I really only need a half inch. So I'm gonna do that in the next step. Okay, as I mentioned, this is not quite done. I need to trim it a little bit. So for starters, let me just trim this part. You can see that there's a big extra chunk. Whoa, that was close. You can see there's a big extra chunk here that I don't need, and that's not gonna work well for my long armor. So I'm gonna just flip it around and trim this so it's nice, the two pieces are just nice and even. One quick little cut here. just to make it so that the two pieces are about equal. Go. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, perfect, just nice enough. Okay, so that is the top edge because I can see that my blouses have got this, the top of the blouses, so it's the top of my quilt. The bottom edge, I think probably I will trim as well. Although they, they look really similar, but I'm just gonna go ahead and give them a quick trim up, trimming both of them at the same time. So I'm probably cutting through two layers here instead of just cutting off one big chunk of fabric. Whoa. Just to make these nice and even as well. It's actually quite surprising how even they were. I hardly needed you know, any extra fabric for this to work with. Sometimes you really have to offset your big or your small piece in order to make it so that the patterns match. And that just leaves my seam allowance. So as I mentioned before, this is a about one inch seam allowance and I only need it to be a half inch. I love to have a nice wide half inch seam allowance on the back of a quilt because I just find that it lays flatter and it feels a little bit more um, sturdy and durable to me. So I'm lining up the half inch line on my ruler with the line of stitches that I just made. I'm gonna work my way down and trim up the entire seam allowance. And the bonus of this, of having put the glue way out at the edge of that fold, is that I'm actually probably gonna be cutting off most of the glue now. So if I just grab these two pieces, it's true, they're not, they're hardly, I mean, in that spot they're glued together, but there's not much glue holding them together. So that's a bonus of starting out with a one inch seam allowance and then working your way, cutting your way down to a half inch seam allowance. Okay. I like to use my longest ruler for this job and my biggest cutting mat just to make the job a little bit easier. And then from here, um, I can choose what to do with this seam allowance. I'm the kind of gal that likes to have an open seam allowance on the back of a quilt top. So I could dig out my pressing mat and my iron and press it open, or I could just use my fingers. And again, so there's not much glue left in here because I cut off a lot of that glue. So I could just use my fingers to press this open and I think that'll work well enough. And I can tell that when I'm pressing even this part open, the pattern matches really well. So I'm really happy with how that looks. And it's just a quick little procedure. This, this option is totally up to you though. You could definitely press the seam to the side if that is something that you would prefer. But I just like to have a nice flat seam in my quilt back. I'm smiling because it turned out really well. <laughs> it turned out really well, this seam. The pattern matching worked really well. And I think it looks almost seamless. There's a bit of glue in here. I'm just gonna pop that apart. Uh, the question would be, if you've got glue on here, is it going to ruin your iron if you put it on? I don't think so. Um, I, I wouldn't be afraid to put an iron on top of this. And if you needed to afterwards, you could just wait till your iron cooled down and then wipe off any residue that was on your iron. But I don't, I don't really, I wouldn't really worry about that. I've done, I've done this lots of times and not had any problems. So let me flip this over so we can take a look and check out the pattern matching. I mean, when you look at that from afar, you definitely can't tell that there's a pattern match. And even when you look up close, it looks really good. I'm really happy with how this turned out.
can you believe how easy and seamless, virtually seamless that was? I love this technique because it's not very complicated and it comes together in a flash. So if you've been avoiding pattern matching your quilt backings up until this point, I hope that this video has given you the confidence to give it a try. And if you're in the market to make a more traditional quilt backing that doesn't have this pattern matching, you'll definitely want to check out this video all about that exact topic. There's no glue involved and it comes together in a flash. As always, I'm wishing you happy sewing and I'll see you in my next video.